Al Azma Section 5, Article 4 is dedicated to UT for wells, and that is uh, what most of the uh, UT inspectors should be familiar with. Uh, so, lots of useful information, and the procedure actually, UT procedures are written for this uh, conventional procedure. Um, and uh, let's go and see what it tells us. Uh, first about the scope, uh, it covers reference requirements. Well, the examination reference code section shall be consulted for a specific requirements for personal qualification. Uh, it tells us about procedure requirements, demonstration, qualification and acceptance, examination system characteristic, retention and control of calibration blocks, it talks about extent of examination or volume to be scanned, uh, the acceptance criteria, which it uh, refers to um, uh, the construction code uh, for acceptance criteria. Remember, there is no acceptance criteria in HASMA Section 5. Uh, Section 5 is only about uh, the procedure report and how to do the job uh, of NDT for various methods, including ontrasonic retention. Uh, of the records, uh, what sort of record you have to retain, and what you need to report. Uh, so, written procedure requirements. Uh, this table is uh, very important because it tells us what are the essential and non-essential parameter variables. So, as you can see, there is lots of essential variables. So, uh, surface can be essential variable, weld configuration, the technique you use, uh, the angle and mode of wave propagation, uh, shear wave, longitudinal wave, or uh, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees. So if you change the angle, the probe, the search unit, uh, frequency, if you change, uh, it is an essential variable. And uh, uh, if you're using a special search unit with pages, shoes, can change the results and hence the essential variable. Uh, the even the ultrasonic instruments, uh, they have uh, different response. So if you change a UT equipment, the calibration block, if you change, uh, so again, it's essential variable uh, and direction extent of scanning, uh, whether you do manual or automatic scanning method for discriminating geometry from slow indications, method for sizing indications, and if using a computer, enhanced data acquisition or a scan overlap, uh, but only for decrease only. So uh, if you are doing say 50% overlap and you decrease it to 10%, then uh, it needs requalification. Personal performance requirements, even here, uh, is essential requirement. So uh, if you change the person who is, uh, remember the personal qualification is not an essential parameter, but the performance, uh, how good the guy is, uh, you know, how well he had this, that can even affect the result, uh, detect the discontinuities. Uh, surface condition um, is not an essential parameter uh, because uh, most of the calibration block there, I mean, should be the same surface condition of, uh, as of uh, the object. Uh, so, if you can get the same result with the same uh, surface condition, both a calibration block and uh, the object, so then uh, that's good to go. Coupland uh, uh, is not because uh, the coupland practically helps to uh, transfer the, as a box, as a medium to transfer and prevent attenuation of the sound wave in the air, so, uh, and also have a, a quick grip of the prop on the test specimen, uh, practically keep it on the test specimen uh, or the object, uh, where it, at most it can, uh, you know, give you a better sound wave or a more attenuated one, but most of them, they don't have much effect on the quality of the ultrasound. Uh, Post-examination, obviously, is not essential. And alarm, automatic alarm or recording equipment, that's accessories and uh, for records and all that, so they are not essential. Now, what if you are changing essential variable here, you have to requalify the procedure. 
which means you have to recalibrate and see that you're actually getting those null uh, artificial flows on a calibration block. If you're doing non-essential variables, you don't need to requalify, uh, but both essential and non-essential variable, if they change, then the procedure need to be revised anyway. Uh, procedure qualification, change of requirement, as we said here, non-essential um, uh, variable or range of values does not require requalification and all changes of essential and non-essential variable should be uh, specified by written procedure shall require revision of that anyway. Now let's go to the equipment, instrument equipment. Pulse echo is the most popular one. So it sent pulses uh, that should be used. Um, instrument shall be capable of, capable of operation at frequencies over a range of one to five megahertz and shall be equipped with a step gain control in units of two decibel to damp it or increase it and uh, the sound uh, energy practically. Uh, so most of the procedure between one to five megahertz, you can uh, the probes that you can use with the frequency. If the instrument has a damping control, it may be used uh, if it does not reduce the sensitivity of examination. So uh, when you dump it uh, to uh, delete those uh, non-important uh, uh, signals so that you can concentrate on uh, signals, you, you want to reduce the noise, um, that's a lot, but as long as it does not reduce the sensitivity of the UT examination. The reject control or the damping can be in the off position for all examination unless it can be demonstrated that it does not affect again the linearity of the examination. The instrument when required because of technique being used shall have both send and receive jacks uh, for operation of dual search unit or a single search unit. So you can use a probe which can have both the uh, transmitter and uh, receiver or you can have uh, one for sending the pulse and one for receiving the pulse the back one record pulse uh, the nominal frequency shall be again as it says here between one to five megahertz unless var variables such as production material grain structure require the use of other frequencies to assure adequate penetration or better resolution now, if uh, the grain structure is uh, fine, that's good enough. But if the grain structure is coarse, uh, there is a lot of damping of ultrasound. Uh, so you need to use a lower frequency uh, with a longer wavelength um, uh, to uh, overcome that. But then the resolution uh, incre decreases if you use a lower frequency. And the higher frequency gives you a better uh, resolution but then the penetration power is less so there is always a trade-off here and search unit with contoured contact pages may be used to aid ultrasonic coupling so if it is a pipe or it's a rounded equipment then in order to uh, have a good grip or contact between the probe and the component then uh, it will be contoured uh, the same uh, dia of uh, the outside layer of the component so you have a better grip and uh, contact pages uh, a diameter uh, for components uh, having less than 14 inch uh, shall be performed using a contoured wedge to have to ensure sufficient ultrasonic coupling uh, is achieved and to limit any potential rocking of the search unit and uh, as it is moved along the surface of the component so uh, less than 14 inch it should be uh, the contour of the same uh, dia outside dia and uh, if you're using a coupling uh, for nickel based alloys you are testing uh, then the sulfur content should be not be more than 250 ppm and if you are using uh, ultrasonic or stainless or titanium uh, metal then uh, the halides that is, it's colorized plus fluorized should not be more than 250 ppm. The certificate should be received from the manufacturer coupling to show that it's less than that. The uh, allied or 
chloride, chloride and sulfur, depending on the material. Calibration block, as you can see here, this is a typical calibration block. Uh, side drill holes here. Uh, we know the size of this drill hole. We know the distance between them. Uh, to, this is to establish primary reference response of the equipment. So you keep this at the top and then the wave hits the first hole, the second hole, the third hole. And you can do it from the other sides also. So you get uh, a, a primary reference response of the equipment by this. There is another calibration block. This is for thickness measurement. Uh, so you put the probe here for normal probe and you know the, what the thickness is and the reading you get, it should coincide with this, with some, you know, plus minus 5% say, um, so that you know that your probe is calibrated and it can measure this distance because these are known to you. And then you can do it on the actual component, the thickness measurement or other tests. Uh, distance amplitude curve, this is another set. So with different depths, as you can see, uh, and uh, you put the probe on top of each one of them, you know the height of this. And uh, as you increase, uh, the use uh, taller ones, uh, so the, the back reflection will be reduced. So you know, depending on the distance that the beam is traveling, uh, uh, how much attenuation you got on the so you can put on different one and you can get uh, different response, uh, back lift, uh, all echo, and uh, then you can, um, uh, that way you can uh, draw your distance amplitude curve or uh, depending on the height of each one of them. And this is a, a most widely used calibration block and uh, v2 block uh, sorry v1 block and uh, then we have a v2 block here so this is much simpler but it gives you that index so you if it is a 45 degree you put the wedge it's got a mark on the wedge of the probe you put it here and you should be able to see this hole so that means uh, or you put it here uh, 65 degree 70 75 40, 50, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65. Normally the probes are 45 degree, 60 degree, and 70, uh, 70 degree. So if you put the index here, you see this hole. If you don't see this hole, then that means uh, your uh, wedge or your probe is not 45 degree, you got some uh, differences here. Uh, this one, you can do many tests with this calibration. Again, uh, you can do uh, like 60 degree. You should be able to hit this hole 70, 75 degrees. So the index should be, the wedge should be here. The probe should be placed here for 70 degree, for 75 degree, uh, 70 degree and 60 degree. And then you can hit this hole. You can put the probe here, longitudinal probe, and you should be, you know, this distance. So you can hit it and you know, you got the right distance here. So a lot of tests being done can be done with this probe and this is a standard IIW, International Institute of Building, V1 block and you've got a V2 block here. It's quicker, it gives you some of the readings that you can get by this method, by V1 block. Uh, material uh, of the calibration block should be the same material, if not same material, then same equivalent P number. Uh, P number means um, they have uh, more or less the same composition from building point of view. <laughs> so if you got a WPS for one met metal and the rest of the uh, metal with the same P number can be welded with the same WPS. So that's what the P number is. It's the same uh, structure, uh, more or less. And uh, if uh, you're using a different material, then you should have a transfer connection, which means, uh, uh, for example, if you are uh, doing uh, from steel to aluminum, uh, then because the density of these two materials are different, there is a factor that you have to multiply with uh, all your calculations uh, for distance and all that, because the denser the material, the more attenuation, <laughs> and the velocity also changes. 
sound. Uh, heat treatment, uh, you should have the same heat treatment. The surface finish, you should have the same surface finish as actual component um, as well. And block curvature for materials with diameter greater than 20 inch. It used to be 24 inch, now they reduce it to 20 inch with new Asmel 5 revision. Uh, uh, I mean, they say it's always the uh, same curvature you should use, but a flat basic calibration block also you can use. So up to 20 inch and above, I mean, greater than 20 inch, you can use a flat uh, basic calibration block. But for materials with diameters less than 20 inch or 20 inch or less, you have to use a curved block. And you don't need to use exactly the same curve uh, as long as your calibration block is between 0.9 to 1.5 times of the bit, uh, the actually component, uh, you can use it um, for that range. For example, if you got a, a, a calibration block of 10 inch, then you can use um, any component with a curvature of outside diameter of 0.9 to 1.5, uh, uh, 9 inch to 15 inch. So if your calibration block is 10 inch. They will also give you an example here. Uh, if you use an 8 inch uh, diameter block, then you can use 7.2 inch, which is 0.9 times of 8 inch, up to 12 inch, which is 1.5 times of 8 inch diameter. So this range you can do. Here's another calibration block uh, with uh, no drilled holes. As you can see, uh, this is a recommended one. And uh, they also, on this table, they say if um, the, your weld thickness is up to one inch, then uh, calibration block thickness can be three by four inch or to one inch, to T, or say if it's one inch, then the T, which is the thickness of the component. And the whole diameter is by 3 by 32 inch. Now, most of the um, fabrications, uh, the metals in whenever, uh, industry, they are uh, at most 1 inch. So you would be mostly using this block, uh, this calibration block with 1 inch or two, uh, uh, 3 by 4 quarter inch with a whole diameter of 3 by 32 inch. And as you can see, 1 inch to 2 inch is 1.5 inch or T. And then uh, the whole diameter is 1 by 8 inch and etc. and 2 inch to 4 inch and so we rarely use anything over to 4 inch that's very highly unlikely so most of the time we use up to 1 inch and uh, calibration block for piping so that's the curvature and this is the holes from the cross section that you can see these holes and uh, the cladding but we are not going to cover cladding in this lesson because this is very really specialized. Identification of weld examination area. So the weld location should be identified and it should be marked, permanently marked with low stress stamp of 2E. Or you should have a weld map where you do the weld location. And uh, the techniques used uh, described in this article intended for the application where either single or dual uh, uh, element search units are used uh, a normal incident longitudinal wave beam or or what are generally termed straight beam or angle beam longitudinal waves where both refracted longitudinal shear waves are present in the material under examination so you can use both types a normal incident longitudinal wave 0 degree or 90 degree compression probes for thickness check lamination check or you can use an angle beam which is a combination of longitudinal waves and shear waves and then you can use a totally angle beam shear wave which is uh, uh, purely is only refracted shear waves in the material there is no longitudinal waves here so there are three types here you can see uh, based on the type of the uh, waves. Uh, purely longitudinal, a mixture of longitudinal and shear, and purely shear, which is angle beam. And most of the time, you use uh, either um, for lamination check or use for uh, purely shear beam or angle beam. Uh, coarse material, we talk about this, like some casting, they are coarse material, um, and also high alloy steel, nickel alloys usually more difficult to do ultrasonic well 
a test and theoretic world examination. Um, and this is caused because of their coarse grain structure. Uh, so you have to use a lower frequency um, uh, to uh, penetrate because the attenuation is much in coarse structure. But then at the same time, if you use a lower frequency, the resolution decreases. So there is always a trade-off. Yeah. Now let's go to calibration of uh, instrument linearity check. Um, so every three months it should be done for analog and one year for digital type instruments. And the temperature between the calibration block and examination surface should not be more than 25 degree Fahrenheit. That's because the temperature uh, can affect the sound velocity. So if it's more than this, uh, um, you, you would get uh, a different sound velocity and hence uh, uh, error in your uh, measurements or readings. Uh, for I think every uh, 50 degree 50 degree Fahrenheit you get like one percent difference or something like that. Calibration for non-piping. Uh, uh, so the, for flat surfaces, uh, the gain control shall be 80 percent of full screen height plus minus five percent. So the maximum uh, variable allowed is plus minus five percent. Uh, of the full screen height, 80% of full screen height. This calibration shall establish the distance amplitude correction. Um, now, calibration checks um, normally done at least uh, one of the reflectors in the basic calibration block, um, uh, one of the probes at least. So you don't need to do all the probes, it's allowed. And since there is sit setting, uh, if it is changed by 20% or 2 decibel, then uh, uh, the whole exam need to be repeated because it makes it void. And examination, uh, they ask for an overlap of minimum 10% overlap. If you are decreasing, remember, if decreasing the overlap, uh, then uh, you have to requalify them. And the speed of the scanning shall not exceed six inch per second uh, unless you can demonstrate that that doesn't affect it or you can qualify it for a higher speed so the maximum speed for scanning is six inch per second um, the scanning sensitivity level uh, uh, so for angle beam techniques or beam angle uh, the unit search beam angle selected will be 45 degree or an angle appropriate which is normally in the industry or the angle beam of 45 degrees, 60 degree, and 70 degree. And the examination uh, of T471 is applicable and it should be uh, the whole fusion line. You scan the whole belt plus one inch beyond the belt toes you have to scan. And that's to check for any base metal uh, defects that may be there. Uh, because that uh, up to one inch uh, it can compound and it can affect the well uh, strength also so that's why you do a uh, one inch and also many times uh, before building a big pipeline for example and or uh, large plates or thick plates you do a lamination check uh, at the after you do the beveling and before the bending see that there is no lamination close to the bevel uh, because that can uh, sort of reduce the strength of the belt. You can interact with that. And that's why the one inch beyond the belt. An evaluation interpret the area containing the reflector uh, in accordance uh, with the procedure, plot and verify the reflector coordinates so you know uh, the location of any discontinuity or that you see. Prepare a cross-sectional sketch showing the reflector position and surface discontinuities, such as root and contour bore, and review fabrication, uh, or well preparation drawings. Um, other ultrasonic techniques or non-destructive examination method may be helpful in determining the reflector's position, size, and orientation. Um, Distance amplitude techniques, all indications greater than 20% of reference level shall be investigated to see what they are and whether they are acceptable or not acceptable according to the referencing code section or construction code. And documentation 
uh, non-relevant indications, non-rejectable indications shall be recorded. Um, if it is required, normally it's not required according to construction codes, most of them. And rejectable indication, obviously, they should be recorded as a minimal type of indications, cracks, non-fusion, slag, etc., location, extent or length of the indications, they should be recorded. An examination records each ultrasonic examination uh, should have the following should be recorded. The ultrasonic instrument identification, uh, including manufacturer serial number, so you know which particular UT instrument you use. So if you got any um, contradiction or any problem, you know you can track down the, that instrument. Search unit identification, again, including manufacturer serial number, frequency and size, a beam angle used, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, type of couplet, brand name or type used, and the search unit used type and length, uh, the cables that they used. Uh, um, so if there is any uh, sort of noise or anything, uh, you know that, that that cable is uh, sort of uh, not properly transmitting the electricity, uh, uh, the pulses. Uh, calibration block identification, which calibration block you have used uh, for traceability, instrument reference level gain, if used, a damping and reject setting, so how much you have increased the uh, decibel or decreased the decibel. Uh, calibration block data, including amplitude, distance reading, and identification location of valve or volume scan, and surface to be examined examined was conducted including surface condition what was it map or record of rejectable indication and area of restricted area now there are uh, uh, two types of tests you have to do one is the screen height linearity so practically you place the probe here and uh, we have shown on previous uh, calibration block you got holes drill uh, so you throw the hole here uh, and you, you get a response from this hole and one from this hole. And because this is like in the middle and this is by three by four quarter, you should be getting uh, this response, half of this response. And then uh, increase it to 80% uh, screen height, the response from first hole. And so the second one should be 40%. And then you decrease it in the steps of 10%. Um, and then increase it up to back to that so to see that you got the same linearity this ratio here and uh, there is a table here so if you decrease say six decibel 80 percent um, minus six decibel the control change or gain control uh, so you the indication should be 40 percent but uh, we said plus minus five percent so 35 to 45 percent you should get the screen height. If you do 12 decibel, you should get like 20%, which is uh, 15 to 25 is the range. Okay, if you increase it, then same way. Um, that's how, uh, so you increase and decrease and see thing, but the linearity. Um, there is, uh, um, written procedure requirement, personal qualification, which says it should be according to the employer's written practice. It refers to the written practice and the written practice, as we said, it is actually taken from SNTTC 1A. Uh, it can be taken from other standards, uh, but uh, eventually it refers you to employer's written practice. Uh, by a level two or level three, personal approved setup calibration should have a level two and level three this one is mandatory so they put it there anyway and uh, then the other topics would be equipment and calibration blocks that you can look at um, so that was it uh, thank you for listening